Okay. If you're watching this presentation, you may be having a little bit of trouble with rhetoric, the art of persuasion, better known as ethos, pathos, and logos. If you're having trouble with it, don't fret too much, okay? It's not easy to grasp. Let me put it to you this way, though. Who wouldn't want to be able to argue better than they do now? When you go to your homeroom teacher and you say, I want to leave two hours early, wouldn't you, be able, wouldn't you like to be able to argue that point a little bit better than just to say, oh, I don't feel so good? It's not a very good argument, and you're probably not going to win, okay? So let's take a look at the tools of rhetoric, the art of persuasion, and try and get a better grasp on this, okay? Calvin and Hobbes are going to be helping us today. Uh, if you're not familiar with Calvin and Hobbes, you're missing out. It's a great comic. But we're going to try and show you the tools of rhetoric in a different way. Let's start out with ethos. The character or persona of the writer as perceived by the reader or the audience. Okay, maybe that doesn't help a whole lot, so let's break it down a little bit further. Ethos assures your reader or your audience that you know what you're talking about. You've done your research, you've earned your degrees, or you've experienced yourself. You're an expert. You know exactly what you're talking about. Now let's take a look and see what Calvin has to say about this. And remember, these are tools of persuasion. You're trying to persuade someone to think or feel the way you do or to act, okay, or to get them to do something. So let's take a look at how Calvin handles ethos. What is he trying to persuade you of? I say it's a fallacy that kids need 12 years of school. Three months is plenty. Now, obviously, he's three months into the first grade. And how does he support this argument? Uses himself as an example or an expert. Look at me. I'm smart. I don't need 11 and a half more years of school. It's a complete waste of my time. Now, Hobbes says, how on earth did you get all the way to the bus stop with both feet through one pant leg? Well, I fell down a lot. Why? What's your point? Nothing. I was just curious. Now, Calvin is using ethos because he's using himself as an example. I'm an expert. I'm three months into this school thing, and I can tell you as an expert that we don't need any more schooling. Eleven and a half more years is a complete waste of time. Is it a very good argument? Not really. Hobbes is like, yeah, you're so brilliant, you couldn't even put your pants on right. Okay, so let's take a look at ethos in a real-life situation. This is spoken uh, or was spoken by Sojourner Truth in 1851 at the Women's Convention in Akron. Women's Convention in Akron was basically trying to give uh, a platform for uh, women's rights. And Sojourner Truth was an African-American. Uh, she was a freed slave at that point in time. And she's trying to say that not only do women need rights, but African-American women need rights even more right now. And she says, that man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. But nobody helps me into carriages or over mud puddles or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I've plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as any man when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? Now, what she's saying here is African-American women need rights even more right now than other women. And she uses herself as the perfect example of why. I would listen to her, wouldn't you? That is ethos, a great tool of persuasion by using yourself as an expert. Okay? Next, let's go into logos. Logos refers to the logical content of communication, including the information being presented and the organizational structure of that information. And again, that definition might not help a ton, so let's break that down a little bit. Logos is the logical content of your argument. This might include the information you present, the connections you make between elements of your argument, and the logical conclusions you draw based on the information you present. The logical conclusions are the key here. 
with your support of whatever it is you're trying to persuade people to do, if your support doesn't end in a logical conclusion, if it doesn't make sense, then it's not logos. Okay? It's not logical. And once again, let's see how Calvin handles logos. You know, school wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have to go every day. Now, I know that most of you are agreeing right now, but let's take a look at his logical support for that. And if you didn't have to learn anything, and if you took away all the teachers and all the other kids, if it was completely different, school would be great. Is this logical? In a way it is, because if you didn't have to learn anything at school, if you didn't have teachers, if you didn't have homework, if you didn't have other people to deal with, school would be great. But then again, it kind of wouldn't be school anymore. A lot of things are like that, Hobbes says. Nobody asks me how things ought to be. I've got a ton of ideas. Now again, Calvin uses logos in this argument, but doesn't use it very well, because his conclusion is not logical. Okay. Now, logos in real life situations. You need to save money on your groceries. Go shopping alone. Have a budget and stick to it. Make fewer, larger trips. Don't shop hungry. Plan your meals in advance. Scan your cupboards, pantry, and fridge before leaving. Keep a running list of items you need on your fridge. Break your list down by store and plan your outing accordingly. With these shopping tips, you'll save up to 40% of your grocery bill. Now, the assertion is what they're trying to persuade you to do is to save money on your groceries. If you take a look at this, if you do all these things, the logical outcome is going to be you know, possibly saving up to 40% of your grocery bill. And it makes sense if you shop alone, if you have a budget and stick to it, fewer trips, don't shop hungry. All these things end in the logical conclusion of saving money on your grocery bill. Okay? And that's logos. Next, let's go into pathos. The anticipated emotional reaction to the audience of the content of a speech or written work. Now, what does this mean? When a writer or speaker uses pathos, he or she is counting on making the audience feel a certain emotion. The hope is that this emotion will make the audience more receptive to the writer or speaker's argument. You're basically playing on the audience's heartstrings, okay? Making them feel sad, making them feel happy, making them feel angry, persuading them to act in a certain way or feel a certain way, okay? And going back to Calvin, I'm not going to do my math homework, okay? And again, I'm sure many of you feel the same way. Let's see how Calvin uses pathos to persuade Hobbes to let him not do his homework. Look at these unsolved problems. Here's a number, number in mortal combat with another. One of them is going to get subtracted. But why? How? What will be left of him? If I answered these, it would kill the suspense. It would resolve the conflict and turn intriguing possibilities into boring old facts. Basically, he's trying to make you feel sorry for the number who's about to get subtracted. I never really thought about the literary qualities of math. I prefer to savor the mystery. Closes his book. He's not doing his math homework. So, in an attempt to persuade Hobbes to let him you know, slide by without doing his math homework, he tries to make Hobbes feel sad for the numbers that are about to be decimated and destroyed by the act of subtraction. <clears throat> now, is it a good argument? Not really. Once again, numbers don't have feelings. But it is a good example of pathos. So, pathos in real-life situations. Now, I got this from a website for Feed the Children. There are tens of millions of children who are underfed and homeless. They struggle just to survive. Your donation today will go to Feed the Children, who need help the most right now, and will help to provide life-changing food and essentials to children in desperate need. This is a very good example of pathos, okay? Tugging at those heartstrings, telling you about millions, millions of children who are underfed or homeless makes you want to give them some more of your money, 
okay? They're persuading you to give money to feed the children, okay? It's very effective. As a matter of fact, I think I'll go make a donation. I hope this helped out a little bit. Um, if you still have questions, come see me and we'll continue to work through it. Uh, but as it stands, there's pathos, ethos, and logos, and I do, help it, I do hope it helped. All right, take care.